Hey everybody, Brian K here, the co-founder of the Advisor Accelerator and the um, founder of the Unconventional Advisor Group. And this week I want to talk about a real brief topic, but something that I think will make a big difference in the way you approach marketing yourself, presenting yourself, branding yourself, and positioning yourself. And I got to give credit where credit is due. I heard this at first from one of our favorite and top advisor slash members, Dave Kozak. And the big insight when he first got started with us and made the decision to join um, our program, our college planning program is, you know, there's really only three ways that you can stand out as a business owner, as an advisor in a marketplace. You either have to be the first to market, you got to be the best in your market, or you have to be different, right? And in the financial advice business, it's going to be awfully difficult for you to be the first, um, particularly if you're selling life insurance, annuities, assets under management and money management, property and casualty, tax planning, whatever it is, retirement planning, very, very hard to be the first, right? So let's go to uh, option number two the best, right? We all think we're the best. Um, and and maybe, maybe you are at what you do, but how are you gonna communicate that to people who don't know, like, and trust you yet, who haven't worked with you yet? Even if it's through a referral <clears throat> from somebody, which is definitely a, a huge leg up in terms of trust and credibility, how is that person gonna know that you're the best objectively? So that's a, that's a tough one, to, especially when you're talking about in a commoditized marketplace like selling life insurance, annuities, or even money management, kind of difficult to prove that you're the best. And again, if you get into the marketplace of, well, I get the best returns and my product gets the best this and I've gotten the best like long term, that, that, you, know, you live by that sword, you die by that sword. So let's go to the third one, which to me, of all the potential areas of um, how to position yourself in a marketplace and what's the easiest, what's the most likely to work, uh, what's the, the smallest climb in terms of an uphill battle, I'm going to say that differentiation is, is where I would place my bets and where I would put my time and energy. It's a whole lot easier to be different than it is to be first and it is to be the best objectively. So let's let's talk about where this pays off differentiation right uniqueness um you know let's use the example of I've, I've got three three children uh one of them is in college one of them is a junior in high school and one of them is an eighth grade um in junior high school finishing up going to high school what do you think the number one thing that colleges particularly the the uh the, the top universities, the Ivy Leagues, the, the, you know, the small Ivies, what are they looking for? Are they looking for the best student? You know, are, are they looking, well, for the first applicant? No, what they're looking for is uniqueness, demonstrated leadership, something that makes that student stand out from the pack, right? So, because otherwise, if you're talking about, for example, a top university, they're getting applicants from every school in the United States with you know uh, perfect grade point averages, perfect ACT or SAT scores, multiple varsity sports, multiple clubs, et cetera, et cetera, right? So everybody looks and feels the same. Even the best of the best of the best begin to start to feel like vanilla when you're comparing yourself against the other best, right? So again, tough. that's a tough battle. Let's talk about corporate America. Um, how easy is it to prove that you're the best, right? You've got to fight a whole uphill battle and there's only one CEO seat, you know, or top brass seat or executive team seat or seats waiting at the very, very top of a very, very thick pyramid at the bottom. And you're going to have to crawl, like claw your way to the top. So, you know, yes, I think the best does rise, whether it's the military or the business world or athletics. But man, that's a tough battle. And the, the, the cards are definitely stacked against the average person from standing out of that type of a group, 
right? So, and there's nothing wrong with it. If you want to play that game, and I, and believe me, I'm competitive and achievement oriented, and I, I love the idea of seeing how far we can go and how far I can go. But man, I want to try to get whatever um, option I have to, you know, to, to lean things in my favor. So to me, the easiest way to stand out, and by the way, this goes for the business world, for small business owners, like if everybody in the, in the life insurance, annuity, or money management business goes out and basically says, I'm the best life insurance agent, I'm the best, you know, I've got the best annuities, um, we get the best returns, or we're, we're the safest money managers, or we're amazing at retirement planning or what, whatever. Again, I, there's, there's a million claims, right? But they all sound the same. They all begin to become background <clears throat> white noise. So how does one differentiate themselves? How do you create uniqueness in a world of sameness where everybody begins to look, feel, and sound the same? So what we found, and let's just target this into financial services, is we stopped trying to compete on the commodity. We decommoditized. And the way we did that was we stopped teaching advisors and agents to sell a product, whether it's life insurance or annuities or gathering assets under management, right? That's, that's not the area of differentiation. You have to go a step before that and say, why do people buy these things? You know, what problem? Um, are are the the people who buy an annuity or a life insurance policy or have a money management services what problem are they trying to solve is this a problem that they have right now um you know and why does this particular product make sense for solving this problem and so when you start to ask these kinds of questions you start to recognize nobody's really buying an annuity nobody's really buying a life insurance policy nobody's really buying or, or paying for money management right they're they're buying what they believe it will bring them whatever solution that they're seeking on the other end of that that made them reach out in the first place so for example if i was buying an annuity i probably am looking for safety and security and guaranteed income in retirement, right? Maybe I don't have a pension. Maybe I don't have enough saved in a 401k, whatever it is. Maybe I'm looking for guaranteed lifetime income. But, and, and again, I know you can't make specific claims and I'm not, I'm not suggesting that any of this is verbiage that you use word for word. But my point in stating this is you need to understand why is somebody showing up in front of me right now? What problem do they have? Um, what else have they tried to solve it? Why is this something they need to do now? Why is this urgent to them, right? Uh, and why have their other solutions failed them? Why isn't it working? Because if you don't have those variables in place, there's no way you're going to present your solution, your plan as unique, new, and different from everything else, right? So if you went in and asked those kinds of questions and the only thing you had to offer in return is my plan is, you know, you should buy an annuity, you should buy a life insurance policy, you know, you should move your money over and do let, let us manage your money. That is not unique. It is not new. And it's not something different. And again, it sounds like everybody else. And it's going to be a real tough battle. That's why people end up having cancellations and being ghosted and taking multiple appointments and being told I need to think it over. And I like, let me show this to my accountant and my lawyer and my brother-in-law, et cetera, et cetera. Right. It, what it re they're really saying is they don't trust you. They don't feel that you're different and they have a established way of getting out of that situation that is socially acceptable. Right. But if instead we said, what life problem can I solve? And then on the back end of solving that problem, maybe an annuity fits into that plan maybe a life insurance policy fits into that plan maybe managing their money fits into that plan so what am i talking about this is where the the big light bulb went off for me about 25 years ago with paying for college right you have this large group of people over 5 million a year that have this massive problem that they cannot get out of that's happening shortly and that has an immediate need or urgency or bleeding neck problem that they need to solve, right? So instead of going in and saying, hey, I'll solve it, 
by selling you an annuity or a life insurance plan or moving your money over and doing better or here's a 529 plan or whatever it is, I start with what is the problem? The problem is I need to send my child to college in the next two years or year and then I've got two under that and I have no idea how I'm gonna do that, continue paying for my lifestyle and make sure that I have money set aside so that I can retire one day and not have to retire when I'm 90, right? So that's why they're showing up and you got to meet the people where they are. It's like, what is, is, is this a, is this a big size problem? Meaning is it commensurate with what I want to charge them for it? Right? Is, is it a small problem or is it a big problem? It's a big problem because if your school is going to cost you $60,000 or more a year and most students graduate in 5.8, um, well, that's, that's a, that's a big, big, big problem. That's 60 times six. Three, three hundred to three hundred sixty thousand dollars per student, and if you have three, you're talking over a million dollars in many cases. So, especially if they go to private schools, so massive problem, massive ROI if you can solve that problem, massive relief, massive urgency, and we, as as you can notice, we haven't discussed product at all. So again, and the other thing is that when you market and you can do, you know, basically it's it's the shotgun versus the rifle approach to, to marketing, right? Um, it's much, much, much easier to target a market that um, where you are differentiating yourself, where instead of trying to be the first or the best in that market, you're setting yourself apart from everybody else in that marketplace by specializing in a particular problem that most other people in this industry overlook handle with a 529 plan, which is really the, the long term when a child's young is a method of saving, but it's not a method of how do I do late stage planning for a family that's got a child going next year. So the big idea is, again, if you have a choice between being the first, the best or different, if, if for my money, I'm always choosing different. If you'd like to learn how you can insert differentiation, urgency, um, uniqueness, um, starving markets into your current practice, then here's my recommendation. Go to www.starvingmarketspecialist.com. We have a 60 minute masterclass where we're going to go through our three step method for helping you basically drive 30 to 50 RSVPs to virtual webinars, uh, get about 20 to 30 of them showing up for the event getting about five to 15 daytime booked virtual appointments from every single virtual event that you do, and then bringing on two to three new clients per event that are worth three to $10,000 a piece. If that's interesting to you and something that you'd like to add to your positioning and your branding and your packaging and your marketing, then again, go to www.starvingmarketspecialist.com. Again, that's the end of my tip. I probably went longer than I wanted to. It's Brian Kay, the Unconventional Advisor, Co-Founder of Advisor Accelerator, and I will be speaking to you soon. If you like this, please give me a like. If you can share this, please share it with anyone who would benefit from it. If you've got a comment, would love to hear it, especially if it's a nice comment. And signing off for now.